sense of desperation is fast spreading across global supply chains. On Friday, one of the most notable executives of the industry has warned the supply chains will never return to normal. Disruptions and threats will extend well beyond 2023, and the next wave of bottlenecks is going to be far worse than anything we've ever seen. At the same time, Shanghai has begun to emerge from a lockdown that has constrained the global economy and created even more turmoil for the system over the past two months, U.S. ports are set to face record congestion this summer, given that an unprecedented number of container ships are being sent to the U.S. coast. And if you thought things were already chaotic in our domestic supply chains, by now, there's no doubt that more unrest is coming as 7 in 10 U.S. supply chain workers are threatening to quit their jobs this year. We have tons of updates for you in this new video, but before moving on, please support us by leaving a thumbs up in this video and subscribing to our channel so you can stay up to date with the most important news. The world's largest port and one of China's main financial hubs has opened today after two months of continued lockdowns. However, as port operations resume in Shanghai, Maersk and Goldman Sachs are sounding the alarm about the ripple effect the reopening will have all over the world in the coming weeks and months. For over seven weeks, a massive parking lot of vessels has been building outside Shanghai ports as operations came to a halt. China's zero-tolerance policies have hit businesses in the manufacturing and commercial hub of Shanghai as well as the broader global economy, with thousands of factories being shuttered and millions of workers being required to stay confined to their homes. Truckers have also struggled to move goods in and out of the city's huge port due to restrictions on movement. But authorities announced last week that lockdowns would finally be lifted in the mega city this Sunday, and public transportation networks are scheduled to reopen on Monday. After two months, the city of 26 million people appears to have contained the spread of the virus. On the other hand, the interruptions caused by the port shutdowns are about to evolve into major disruptions that won't disappear anytime soon. According to Project 44, a supply chain data tracking platform, the port saw a 175% increase in container dwell time between March and April meaning ships have been waiting significantly longer to take on cargo, indicating issues with trucking operations on land. Restarting Shanghai could be problematic for the rest of the world, Project 44 said. The city's lockdown and reduced port capacity created a massive backlog of products that need to be loaded on container ships and hauled westward. Goods will start flowing in and out of Shanghai's port as the lockdown lifts, but delays for ships and trucks are unlikely to disappear, it continued. The number of vessels waiting outside the port is still increasing as factories grapple to secure the materials needed to return to full production. The situation is expected to remain dire for a while, the firm added. On a similar note, Maersk and Goldman Sachs released two separate reports which outlined that the immediate restart of Shanghai would create renewed global supply chain congestion. Goldman alerted last week that a resurgence of ship bottlenecks is likely as China suddenly restarts sailings all at once. Meanwhile, Maersk released new data indicating that container rates have already rebounded. Container freight rates on the Shanghai to Los Angeles shipping lane have already gone up by 30% and are set to increase more as shipping volumes surge. The giant logistics company also noted that this will result in a new wave of supply chain congestion in the U.S. by the summer. As soon as these lockdowns end and you have all this capacity actually being moved at the same time, it'll definitely create new issues. Most probably, it'll be issues on both sides of the U.S. Alex Charvalier, a supply chain lead at the vessel tracking site Marine Traffic, said, And with no structural changes at U.S. ports expected in terms of truckers, workers and port facilities 
Those ports won't have the capacity to deal with the sudden and unprecedented rise in ships arriving, experts highlighted. The outlook is so dire that a new survey of 200 major companies from the logistics industry, conducted by platform container Exchange, forecasts that this year's summer peak season cargo surge will be even more chaotic for global supply chains than the 2021 peak shipping season. Over 50% of respondents said they expect the 2022 peak season to be worse than anything we have ever seen. On top of that, 58% of members have already decreased revenue projections for 2022, while 61% have already experienced supply chain disruptions due to transportation and shipping issues. Most worryingly, members don't see any light at the end of the tunnel, revealed Colm Rafferty, the chairman of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. For Stanley Smulders, the director of marketing and commercial at the global shipping company Ocean Network Express, if both consumer and business demand doesn't change, backlogs will continue, because the reason for the backlogs is lack of transport inland, lack of labor and facilities to unstuff the containers, he said. The shortage of qualified labor at U.S. ports has dramatically aggravated over the past two years. The lack of enough dock workers, truckers, warehouse workers, and many other professionals across the system have contributed to prolonged congestion, extensive delivery delays, and shortages all across the country. To make things even worse, over one in seven, or about 77% of U.S. professionals working in supply chains and logistics are threatening to quit their jobs this year. A recent study conducted by research firm Hayes found that a lack of future opportunities was the most common reason listed for wanting to move, accounting for 27% of responses. Meanwhile, 55% of supply chain workers said they have plans to move to other jobs that offer better pay and benefits packages. The absence of these essential workers can lead to the collapse of domestic supply chains this year, as it becomes virtually impossible to process the huge amount of cargo headed to U.S. ports. In fact, according to FreightWave CEO Craig Fuller, one of the most important executives of the industry, supply chains will continue to deal with a long list of threats over the long term. In a report released on Friday, Fuller warned that the U.S. supply chain will remain broken well beyond 2023, and that global supply chains will remain under constant threat of disruption for the next decade. The expert noted that the system operates best when the world is peaceful and stable, which is the opposite of what we have right now. A smoothly running supply chain requires buffer stock, which is challenging with declining population demographics, he pointed out, adding that there's also a conflict between environmental, social, and governance goals and supply chains optimized for cost and speed, meaning that we will need to contend with higher supply chain risks in the long run. And this will have a devastating impact on the availability of products. Hannah Kane, the CEO of Supply Chain Management at Alum, explained that most parts of our existing infrastructure are collapsing, and America has to expand ports, rails, and roads in order to restore balance in supply chains, a process that can take decades to complete. On top of that, continually shifting consumer needs will result in persistent supply and demand issues for retailers and huge complexity for the logistics and movement of products, Kane detailed. Consumers have come to expect a level of personalization and customization in products. This has meant retailers are required to carry not just stock of a single product, but multiple variations of that product. The reality is that the supply chain crisis will reduce this complexity and result in lower product variation, she outlined. For smaller retailers, who often count on speed, nimbleness, and agility for an edge over larger competitors, current supply chain disruptions are proving to be a high hurdle. 
A survey from Software Advice exposed that 91% of small businesses and retailers believe larger companies have an advantage over them in the current supply chain crisis. 55% of them attribute this advantage to the fact large companies are prioritized by suppliers, and 45% say it's because they're limited in their ability to switch suppliers. 46% have reported that at least one supplier had dropped them for reasons specifically related to being a small business. Moreover, the survey also uncovered that 30% of small businesses don't have access to alternate or new shipping options, for example, switching from ocean to air freight, and 41% are unable to pay premium shipping prices. According to the National Federation of Independent Business, in April, small business optimism reached the lowest level recorded in 48 years, with inflation concerns reaching their highest level since 1980. Small businesses and retailers account for 47% of U.S. consumer demand, and as these companies are being forced to reformulate, downsize and find alternate sources. Out-of-stock rates are expected to soar this year. At this point, as supply chain problems persist, there's no shortage of shortages. In the food sector, the current out-of-stock rate jumped to 40% this month, up from 31% in early April, according to a report from Food Processing. American consumers are still seeing shortages of everything from electronics to toilet paper to hamburgers, and it seems every industry and buying segment is experiencing its own sort of supply chain disruption. The main question is, are empty shelves here to stay? According to Fuller, yes. In his latest notes to clients titled, Supply Chains Are Never Returning to Normal, he highlighted that shippers have realized that supply chains are not rebounding anymore. Historical models no longer work, as the world becomes far less predictable, peaceful, and safe. Supply chains are getting far more exposed to supply and demand shocks, he wrote. In other words, the nightmare has only just begun.